This is FBG Jen and FBG Kristen. And I'm FBG Margo, host and producer. You're listening to the podcast that will help you keep a lid on the junk in the trunk and inspire you to live a happy and confident life. Each episode, we chat with motivational experts and celebs and share our own candid adventures in being healthy. If you're looking for a podcast that's equal parts hilarious and enlightening, well then welcome to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. This is FBG Margo, and on the line today, we have FBG Jen. Hello. hello. And we have FBG Kristen. Yo. And guys, we got ourselves a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Yay! So please, our favorite. it's our favorite thing in the world. So wherever you guys get your podcast, look us up, Fit Bottom Girls. Be sure to subscribe. That way you'll never miss an episode. And if you get it through Apple Podcasts, if you can leave us a five-star review, we will read that review on the air. And I'm going to read this really quick out loud. This is from Jen Cole from the USA. And she says, thank you so much for doing this podcast where I'm always learning new things. I was introduced to it by my awesome coach and teacher, FBG Allison. Oh, oh yay. yay, Allison, yay. <laughs> I look forward to listening to Margo, Jen, and Kristen each week. They are genuine, curious, in spirit, fun, and allow for diversity in thought. Most recently, I enjoyed hearing from Jenny Jurek and Scott and Osteen Wood Comero, who I would have not have found on my own. So thank you so much, Jen Cole. So yeah, guys, wherever you get your podcasts, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to email us at podcast at fitbombgirls.com. And today, we're talking to a couple of fit chicks, no? Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about it, you guys. Wow. (laughs) Amanda and Laura. I was like, I was actually one on this interview, but we've talked to Amanda a number of times because Chris and I actually, gosh, you don't say appeared. You appeared on a podcast. I guess people don't see you. Do you still say appeared? (laughs) Side note for Amanda. (laughs) We were on their podcast, their Fit Chicks podcast, and just had a great conversation with Amanda and just like Kristen and I drive with her and she was like so FBG and we learned all about her um, her and Laura's training academy and um, we actually, which is kind of like just a fitness and nutrition expert program, and we actually signed up for it and got involved and became an affiliate because we loved what they were doing so much. So. I'll let Kristen talk about what's awesome in this conversation because I'm excited to hear it. But if you guys are interested in getting certified and want to do more with fitness, want to teach fitness, kind of want to take your your interest in healthy living to the next level and help other people, um, there, the Fit Chicks Academy is definitely um, something you should look at. It's a Canadian-based program, but it is, it's incredible and it's so well-rounded and not focused just on weight loss or what the body looks like. It's it's really in depth, and I've been really impressed. So I'll make sure that we pop a um, a link into our our blog post and our show notes and everything, so that everyone can can check it out. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that we feel pretty strongly that like if you if you dig us, you would dig them, and vice versa, because we stand for a lot of the same things. You know, very very mission focused, very um, you know, like fitness is not about looking a certain way. It's really about feeling good. And, um, you know, the whole community aspect is just really, really very cool. So yeah, so in this, and in this article, or article, geez, in this interview, it was really fun. Margo and I got to talk to, to both Amanda and Laura, uh, which was great. And man, they're like, super smart, super fun, super busy. And I don't know, I, I really had a good time. Margo, I think that you did too, I hope. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Chris and I well, are always, I always on the Canadian podcast, by the way. If there's a Canadian <laughs> person, are. Chris and I are always on top of it. We well, are. It's always interesting to talk to fitness professionals kind of about like their personal stuff. So not only like what they recommend, but what they do. I always think yeah. that, that that's just an interesting conversation to have and we can all learn from each other. Yeah, and it's great because they are, they're a little, again, a little like us in that, um, you know, Amanda and Laura are each, like their lives are different from one another. So, you know, they are doing different things in fitness. Their schedules look different, but both of them are making it work in a way that works really well for themselves and for their families. You know, so yeah, there's a lot to take away from that. You know, we, we talked about like fitting in workouts because, I mean, geez, they're running their academy. They have... Um, you know, they have in-person retreats. They've got 10,000 things going on. And yeah, I mean, they're walking the walk, which I love. 
And they have their own certification program. And we were just kind of talking off the air, like about our different certifications that we have. And I believe theirs is compatible with NASM, NASM, if any of you have NASM. Um, so I think you should definitely check out this interview, especially if you're looking to b- build up your credentials a little bit. I, I would totally recommend it. Same. Yep. <laughs> totally. Same, same, same. Totally. totally. Yeah, I'm going through it now and it's it's great. It's well run, it's well supported, you know, and obviously just you you learn a ton. So um yeah, totally recommend. And if you guys have questions, I mean I know that they're very responsive, but you're also welcome to ask us anything. Um you can hit us on social media or comment on here if you have questions about it because you know us, we'll be honest. We'll tell you what's yep. up. And I think we'll probably on the site be sharing some of the things that we've been learning and doing as we go through the educational process. So that should be fun, too. I think we might. We just might. You never know. I'll talk to the boss. Yeah, right? (laughs) (laughs) All right. With that, let's just get right into our interview today with the Canadian Fit Chicks. Today's guests are Laura Jackson and Amanda Quinn, who are the founders of Fit Chicks, Canada's largest women's only fitness company. Starting in 2008 with only seven chicks and many companies in the industry failing to grow, their goal of fierce fitness made fun that's accessible to all women expanded their award-winning women's only boot camp from over 20 locations to include health retreats, fitness DVDs, nutrition challenges, and the Fit Chicks Academy, their online certification program. To date, they have helped over 10,000 women transform and reach their goals. Welcome to the show today, Laura and Amanda. Hi. Hi. (laughs) This is FBG Margo. And on the line today, we have FBG Kristen. Hey, guys. So Kristen and I are the big Canada files on this show. We always interview the Canadians. That's just how it always turns (laughs) out, luckily for us. And we're so happy to have you both here. Can you give our audience uh, a bit of a background on your your brand and how you created your business? Sure. Amanda, do you want to start with that one? (laughs) Yeah, of course. I know Um, there's so much to say, but basically we started, um, so we started our company Fit Chicks in September of 2008. So we're actually in our 10th year right now, which is kind of crazy. And um, when we started it, we actually both worked corporate jobs at the time. And so we had jobs that we both kind of loved, but we never felt really satisfied, right? Like we had that passion for health and fitness, but we just never felt like, you know, we were, we'd go home from work and we'd kind of be like, there has to be more to this, you know? And so we decided to start Fit Chicks in September of 2008 with our first bootcamp class. And we had seven women sign up and we were both like, oh my gosh, like, what are we doing? Like, is this, you know, really happening? And you get kind of freaked out. But then we realized that we were definitely going down the right path after that first class that like momentum started happening. The energy started happening. We got really excited. And, um, we started building from there. And so essentially we started our brand with our Fit Chicks bootcamp classes. And then from there began to expand further into fitness retreats, um, a DVD system that we sold through the shopping channel here in Canada. And then, um, from there we've now expanded into our other brand, which are, which is Fit Chicks Academy, which is our online certification and education part of our company. So we're, this is basically where we help women get certified in health and fitness and help them grow amazing businesses. Fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's actually a course that I am beginning right now. And it's, it's amazing. It's so all, all, all inclusive, I guess, is the best way to say it because it's, it's really touching on all the main things. So with everything you guys have going on, obviously that is, that's a lot to manage. Um, And then you have just your regular life and your families and all of that. So do you guys find it hard to fit in workouts or does that come in just because you're in the fitness realm? Is it like, oh yeah, that's just part of my day? Well, I kind of feel like, this is Laura, I kind of feel like it's different for both of us because Amanda and I are kind of in different situations. So Amanda can speak to hers because she has a daughter. For me though, I, I just have a partner who takes up enough of my effort and time as it is. Um, But I personally, for me, I still find it hard to get my workouts in, but I make them like a serious priority because for me, like, it's not just about obviously staying fit and active, but it's my stress relief. It really helps with anxiety. So I like schedule it in. So I'm more of like a morning worker outer. So I make sure that like, before I start my day, I always get my workout in. Even when I don't What did you do this morning? 
<laughs> this morning I actually went for a run. So today was cardio day for me. Yeah. And I would say my life is definitely a little bit different because I have a young daughter. For me, it's kind of like, I try to schedule it in, in the mornings, but sometimes my mornings explode, right? Like they become like, just like, for example, this morning ended up being a uh, music class day and it was her second last music class before we actually moved. So, and I know I can't make it there next week. So uh, my husband wanted me to join them and everything else. So I ended up going to the music class instead of doing my workout kind of thing. But generally I try to do it in the mornings as well, but I keep my workouts, they're at home workouts right now because that's the most convenient for me. And I keep them like 30 minutes or less so that I can just like bang them out, like as much energy as I possibly can in that short period of time to just like get it done and then get started with my day. Generally, I try to get up earlier than everybody else in the house just to do it so that it doesn't get interrupted, but that doesn't always happen. Depends on how well she sleeps at night. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So yeah. <laughs> with with having that kind of a routine or, you know, in some cases kind of a lack of routine, having to, to bounce around with, with whatever's going to work, do you guys find yourselves, like Laura, you said that today was a cardio day. Do you kind of have a strict schedule as to what you're trying to hit in what order? Do you ever find yourselves in ruts? You know, does it get boring? And if so, how do you mitigate that? Oh, for sure. I get into ruts and for sure it gets boring at times. And that's, I'm actually right. I'm starting a new program on Monday, but for me, I found for my body. So just to give you a little bit of background, even when we first started fit Chick, so I was never like sporty or athletic growing up. And a lot of people think if you work in fitness, right, that you're just naturally like super active and sporty. I actually was overweight. Um, for most of my like twenties, like late teenage years, twenties, you know, working corporate job, overeating, I had an eating disorder, actually traveling a lot with work, anxiety, binge drinking, all that good stuff that comes with your twenties. And so for me, when I found working out, I really found, like I said, not only was it for me about weight loss, but it also for me really transformed my whole life. And that's why I became so passionate about it. And that's why essentially even Amanda and I, when we started Fit Chicks, that's why we truly believe it grew so much because we were so we we knew what it did for us. So we're like, we want to bring this to other women, right? So that being said, for me, I found what's worked best for my body over the years is that my workouts, I try to do a five day split. I totally am into strength training. So I do go to the gym. And I like to lift heavy, but I'm not into like power lifting kind of weights. So I typically try to do about four days of weights one to two days of cardio. And then the rest of the days I'm active. So I do wear like a Fitbit. I make sure I walk. I try to get my 10,000 steps. But that being said, you know, I do sometimes get bored. So even right now I am actually, I'm switching up to a whole different program, but I'm still staying with like strength training and cardio, but just in a whole different kind of format. Yeah. And I would say for me, it's a little bit different too, because I'm really into yoga as well. And so yoga has always been like a huge passion of mine. So trying to incorporate that into my routine is really important for me. But at the same time, like since my daughter has been born, so since Maddie has been born, my workout switched so that with limited time, I would just kind of fit in. Like sometimes it'd be like a 10 minute, like little hit workout. Sometimes it's like 30 minutes of strength training. I have a treadmill at home. I have some equipment at home. So I kind of incorporate it. But I also personally feel like hiring a coach is really important and or following a program that is set up for your goals is really important if you want to start reaching goals. Like I've totally hit a rut right now where I'm just kind of like, I'm moving because it's important to me daily, but I'm not necessarily seeing the results that I want. So I've actually hired a coach myself that I'm going to be starting with once I'm moving in two weeks. So once I actually settle into my new home, I'm going to be starting a very personalized one-on-one -on -one training program with them. So I'd like to talk about your Fit Chicks Academy online and specifically the fitness and nutrition expert certification program that you have coming up. Can you tell us a bit about what involved with it and how it's different from other types of accreditations out there? Sure, Laura, I'll let you answer that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you were to take that one. <laughs> the long, the long core pause. We're like, uh, yeah, for sure. So the fitness and nutrition expert program, it's, what really makes it different is it's about a holistic approach to fitness and health. So there's really no other fitness certifications out there that actually approach it from a holistic perspective. So it's almost like you're getting four certifications in one. So we start off, we go through fitness where not only do we talk about personal training, but also group fitness, online training, um, how to build activity coaching, 
and also just really understanding like what is going on with the body. Then in the nutrition side, we really focus on building nutrition programs that are going to support your fitness programming. Then we go into wellness, which is not only just about how to deal with stress management, sleep, things like that. Um, but it's also a lot about self, um, self perspective and self growth. So there's a whole section in there that we really focus on working on you as a fitness professional. How, what do you want to achieve in your life and what do you want to create in your life and, um, the mindset that has to go along with that. And the last part is actually business. So we, um, we talk about how to essentially build an amazing business and start your own business in this industry. So when we essentially made this, uh, created this program, it was because we were tired of taking so many certifications. Like Amanda and I had gone through years and years of certifications and spending so much money on all of these things and learning from so many different teachers and industries that there wasn't that kind of like connectivity to it all. So we're like, well, what if we kind of took everything that we believe in and that we do at FitChicks and put this into one certification? So it's like a one kind of stop shop as opposed to having to, you know, spend weeks and years in all these different courses. And we've just seen the results been so amazing because when you when you go with somebody through that whole journey over 12 weeks of not just learning how to teach fitness classes, but, you know, learning about the nutrition and also really getting into who they want to be in this industry and what they want to stand for the growth and what, what our students are doing now. It's absolutely insane. It's amazing. It's probably like been the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life is, is working with our students in this Academy. I agree 100%. And I was just going to add in that, like, you know, when we first started the certification, like Laura said, the, the whole key behind it was that we wanted to be able to provide that holistic approach to it. But, you know, seeing the people and how, they are transforming and what it is that they're actually doing is so motivating to me. Like I'm so involved. Well, we both are so involved with our grads and our current students and all of our alumni, because for me, it's like, I want to support them in the best way I know how, which is like, if it's the fitness side they're struggling with, if it's the nutrition side, Laura can support them in any way. And then if it's the business side, which is the kind of component that a lot of health and fitness professionals struggle with because they have this huge passion for health and fitness, but they don't necessarily know the business side of it. We support them in every way possible. So we have like an online community where we constantly are doing coaching calls or just um, Facebook lives or doing Q and A's so that we're helping to support them in that way. And then I also spend a lot of time. Um, I dedicate a day out of my week that I open up to setting up scheduled calls with grads or even with current students, just helping them figure out, you know, the ins and outs of the business side of it, because my goal is to see them and my mission is to see them succeed. And this has been something that for both Amanda and I has been like a huge passion is because when we were first starting Fitchix too, and we were teaching the, like the client. So we were teaching the boot camps then we both don't teach the boot camps anymore. We have instructors that do that for us, but you know, it was so amazing to see like the physical transformations and the life transformations in our clients. But now it's like, we're helping women now do that in their communities. So we feel like our impact can be a lot bigger. So, you know, we have students who are in like the smallest towns in Northern Canada where they don't even have a fitness instructor. And now they have someone who is like a voice in that community. And then we have other women who are like in big cities in New York city, actually like she's, her business is insane what she's doing now. She couldn't, English was her second language and she could, she was so nervous to take this course. She didn't even think she could take it. And now she is helping the entire Hispanic community where she lives and like making huge changes. So, I mean, for us, we're, that's what I think fires us up to you is seeing the impact of how much when you know, and you're passionate about health and fitness and you know how to bring that to your community, how many people you can in turn help from that. And we also really believe, sorry, I'm a big talker. I'm going to go on about this for a second. But we also, <laughs> the other thing too, though, is Amanda and I have always kind of been like, not, I wouldn't say the black sheep of the fitness community, but like we don't, <laughs> we're not into the six pack abs. We never bought into the idea of marketing to women's insecurities. When it came to fit chicks, like if you ever look at any of our marketing, it's all like a little cute yellow chick because we never wanted to look like the gyms where they're you know, basically like preying on what you're insecure about to get your money. So it was all about, always about body positivity, body diversity. And now we're really trying to focus on bringing that to with instructors. So body diversity and age diversity in the instructors that we're helping certify, because realistically, you know, fitness applies to everyone, every age, race, shape, size, we all need it in our lives. And we need more people who are leading that 
who look like all these different areas of life instead of just this one model of a 20 year old with a six pack and a sports bra on that like is intimidating the 50 year old women who are like that's not really my goal right so it's cool to see the people we, that that we're certifying what they're doing to bring health to all these different kind of um levels of life i love that you mentioned age diversity because i feel like that is and maybe it's just because i am getting older and i'm noticing that more but it is really different like there, you know, maybe we are all going to do the same class and we all want to, you know, we all want to feel badass at the end. But, you know, at a certain point, the idea of like maintaining like good flexibility, stability, mobility, like that, you know, that's certainly more important to me than making sure my my biceps are popping, you know, like yeah. I, I want to be able to continue moving and be comfortable And that has, that's become a little harder in the last, you know, five years. And I don't imagine that's going to go the other way. So yeah, um, I I can recommend. It's not like Benjamin Button. (laughs) Right. Yeah. But I can recommend you some supplements to help with that. I'm also a holistic nutritionist, so I'll hit you up after. (laughs) Sweet. Yeah. Let's talk. (laughs) Um, Okay. So in addition to, to the Academy, and I, I think it's really cool how involved you guys are personally with everyone. Um, you're also in the, the fitness wellness retreat world and you recently hosted one. And so I wondered, can you talk a little bit about what you see as being a really big benefit of attending something like a wellness retreat? And if you have any tips for helping people figure out whether or not a retreat would be right for them to attend, I'd love to hear that too. Yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, the benefits to attending a retreat that we've seen through the women, we've been running our retreats, I think now for, gosh, Laura, you might correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's been about seven years that we've been running retreats now. And our retreats are like, for us, it's almost like, um, I don't want to say it's like a selfish thing for us, but for us, it's also like, we get really excited about the retreats because we don't, we're not teaching our physical classes anymore. So this is our way to like, interact with people in person because we live behind our computers, right? Doing online training programs. So it's kind of like this amazing time that we also get to spend with the women that we get to meet. But the benefits for them, you know, majority of the women that come to it, I find they're all looking at it as a way to kind of kickstart their health and fitness. And I think that's a great way of approaching it because oftentimes we need that. Like we just need something that's going to inspire us in a different way. And with our retreats, what we have done is we've created it so that the entire, it's a weekend retreat and the entire weekend itself is just, I call it like a buffet of health and fitness because you have all different sort of pieces. So you have Zumba, you have yoga, you have meditation, you have boot camp, you have an outdoor fitness challenge, nutrition workshops. So literally you're, they're getting bite-sized information of everything so that they can kind of try it on see how it works for them, if it makes sense for them. And then if it does, hopefully they will continue with that area once they leave the retreat, right? So it's about inspiring them in some way or another, and also giving them a comfortable place to be able to interact with other women that they just feel like they're safe. They can kind of, you know, be silly. They can do the Zumba class. And, you know, if they're like me and they have no coordination at all, it's totally cool. We can stand at the back of the room together (laughs) and like, I also see these weekends, though, as a really great way of shifting the mindset of the girls, the girlfriend's weekend. And I'm not saying that there's not a time and place for the girlfriend's weekend, like the traditional, like what I'm talking about is like when you go away with your girlfriends and you come back and you feel like bloated because you're eating food you don't normally eat. And maybe you're a little hungover because you've been drinking a lot of wine or like margaritas or whatever. And like, I find that girlfriend weekends traditionally are always about like indulgent sort of weekends. And I do think there's a time and place for those. I'm not saying that there's not, but I also think that there's a nice shift happening where women can now start getting together and do things that they love, which is about being like movement or exercise or learning and growth, and then still have that bonding experience. So going back to um, your, your certification, and I love this aspect of the business part of it and that you're advising women on how to create their brand and uh, build a business. Can you give us your best advice for women if they want to create their own fitness brand? Oh, we have so many pieces of advice. Good. Um, <laughs> I would say my first thing is get really clear on who you want to serve. So who do you want to work with? And this is something that I see and Amanda sees a lot coming, especially out of our academy, but just in general in business is that people are like, yeah, I want to teach fitness classes. I want to teach personal training. I want to do nutrition. 
And we're like, okay, for who? And they're like, well, I don't care. I just want to teach it to everyone. And we're like, if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. And now with all the noise that's going on with internet and, you know, people have such a low attention span, you got to make sure that your message is in front of the people who really need your help. So like, for example, like if you want to say to work with um, new moms who are, you know, six months postnatal, that's something that's really clear, right? Or you could, you know, obviously maybe give an age range, but that's really clear. So if you're a new mom and you're looking to work in it with someone who specializes in that, then you're going to listen to what someone has to say, as opposed to like, if I just say, yeah, I work with women and I help you, you know, get in shape. So I just, that's my first piece of advice would be to get really clear on who it is you want to work with. And at the same time, get clear on who you don't want to work with. And because, you know, it sucks a lot of energy too, if you're attracting the wrong people. So that was something for us. Our background was actually, um, my background was in branding and marketing. I was in international marketing and Amanda's was in sales. So we had already kind of a stronger business foundation when we started. And from day one, even before we had one client, we treated our fitness brand, we treated Fit Chicks like it was thinking about it like a global brand. So we were literally, we're just like, okay, who do we want to serve? What do we want to stand for? And I think that work is so important and you should do it from the get go when you're starting a fitness brand. That's my number one. I'm sure Amanda has like 10 more to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that that's so key. I think, you know, being clear about who you want to work with. I think being also very clear as to like who who you want to like what what you want to be known for or who you want to be known for in the world. So it's a little bit different than who you want to work with. It's like, what is your voice saying to people out there? Like, do you want it to be... Um, you know, do you want it to be really serious or do you want it to be kind of really fun or funny or whatever, like engaging in different ways, but being really authentic to who you are and who your voice is and also understanding like what you want to be known for in the industry, I think is really important. I heard this uh, piece of advice once from a coach and I loved it. And it was basically, you know, just saying like, if someone is going to like search you on Google or Wikipedia or something like that, like what are, what's going to come up? And so like, you want to make sure that like what's coming up is what you want to be represented and known as in the world. So I think thinking about that and taking some time to really think about who you want to be known as and how you want to be known is key and spending time. And this is a big one for me is spending time on your name of your brand. So your brand and your, and what you're putting out there is what you're known for. But if you have a brand that is unrecognizable or not really creative or not very clear. So if you have a brand that's just like, you know, Amanda's fitness, like it's, it's fine. It's clear that like people know it's a fitness brand, but it's probably not that memorable. Right. And so like with us, we actually say, and I know Laura, you agree with me that like our brand fit chicks is probably like, we feel like it was the best business decision we've made <laughs> ever. <laughs> but the thing that's funny about the, our name was that we almost didn't call ourselves fit chicks. We almost totally. called ourselves two fit chicks. And it was actually a friend of ours who said to us, He's like, well, what's your long-term plan? Because if you say you're two fit chicks, you're always going to be known as two fit. Like it's small. There's two of you. What do you want to do with this? And he's like, why don't you just drop the two and be fit chicks? And we're like, you're right. So it was like <laughs> thinking big picture, you know, because when you start building your brand and you start building all of your, your voice and your Facebook pages and your website and all these things, it's a lot of work. So it's like, get clear on what that name is and what it's very, it's easier to figure out your name when you think about what do you want to actually become in the world. So for us, we always knew we wanted to reach as many people globally as possible. And at that point, we didn't know it was going to turn into the academy, but that was always our, our full vision. So we wanted to make sure it was really inclusive, not boxing us in. And, and I think too, um, just adding to that, it's also how people can identify with your brand right? Like even with your brand, um, fit bottom girls, like people can identify with that. Cause they're like, yeah, I'm a fit bottom girl. Like, yeah, that totally makes sense to me. And same with fit chicks. It's like, yeah, I'm a fit chick. Like, and so they can identify with that. But if it's Amanda's fitness, it's like, well, I'm not Amanda. So you know what I mean? Like it's, it kind of disassociates for them a little bit. I feel like I just got like a marketing crash course. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, um, all right. So since I'm talking to the fit chicks, I want to talk a little bit more about fitness because I, I've really enjoyed looking through the the awesome time saver workouts that you guys share on your blog. And there's a question that I hear a lot 
from readers and just from friends asking about kind of how the time you spend in a workout correlates to like the level of difficulty of that workout. And it's tricky because while of course, like a 12 minute workout can be super, super hard and intense, you can also look at it as like that shorter time commitment makes that workout, regardless of how hard it is, a little more accessible to somebody who is totally intimidated by the idea of like spending an hour in the gym. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, um, you know, I mean, we, with both of our brands, like we speak to people at all different levels of fitness. So I wondered if you could offer some tips for um, maybe start with beginner and kind of move up just on maybe how you, how you would work with somebody who's pretty new to fitness wants to get in some nice time saver workouts and really wants to um, focus on progression. And they want to, they want to see themselves getting fitter, getting stronger. um, And they want to see that with the workouts they're building too. What kind of tips would you have for them for, for looking at that kind of a program? Sure. I would say, I'm going to say that my first tip and then Laura, I'm going to let you take over for progressions, but my first tip for anyone who is just starting out is, look for things that are just accessible to you. So like, don't feel overwhelmed with like trying to do everything and doing all the workouts and all the exercises, et cetera. If you're not certain what um, some things are, maybe hire a coach. But my biggest tip though for beginners is to do workouts based on time versus repetitions. I find that when people look at things as repetitions, they end up sometimes feeling like a failure because they're maybe not able to, if you say do 50 pushups to someone who has never worked out before and they're just starting on their fitness journey, that's super overwhelming, even if it's 20 pushups or 10. And so looking at it from a perspective of doing it by time versus reps. So if you're saying do 30 seconds of pushups, that seems a lot more doable. And even if that means you do two in that 30 seconds, that's perfect. And then you progress from there. You keep working on it. Right. And you keep your time, the same, but you start looking at how many more reps and maybe you start tracking it from that perspective so that you can start seeing how you are progressing. And then maybe eventually you do start increasing your time. But I find time versus repetition is really helpful from a mindset perspective to keep people feeling engaged and excited and accomplished as opposed to feeling overwhelmed or feeling frustrated. Yeah. And my, my tip too, and then going into progression, but I'm going to go back to even as well as what Amanda first said. And that's about getting a coach or getting a plan. I think one of the biggest things for people who are just starting, it's overwhelming, right? Like you're, you're entering into a new area of your life. You're learning about fitness. You're trying to fit this in. You might be sore. You might feel overwhelmed. So if you're also trying to do all of your programming or just downloading workouts from the internet, I find that that can be, you know, it's very easy to get off track. So It doesn't mean you have to invest right away in like, let's say a full on personal trainer, but there's so many programs out there. We can actually buy like a four week program or one that actually progresses for you. So you don't have to think about it because again, I'm all about trying to create the minimal amount of chaos or stress in your life because we all have such busy lives. So the, the more you can kind of take off your plate and let somebody else do for you, I say, go for it. So that would be the first thing. I would do would either be like find a plan or find like the time saver workouts. Cause there's, again, there's a ton that are pre-planned for you over four weeks that you can get. Um, we also have even with ours, we do a 28 day fitness challenge. We also do monthly training as well, where we progress through not the Academy through our fitness brand. So that would be my first recommendation. My second recommendation would be not to switch your workouts every single week. And this is something I see with beginners too, is they're like, okay, I'm going to do this workout, then I'm going to do this workout. And, or when people get bad programming, or I shouldn't say bad programming, but I think it just, again, it becomes too chaotic. So the way I like to actually progress my workouts is I do the same workouts with my clients or with myself every single week. And what I do is I add on either time or reps or sets every week. So not to make it too confusing, but let's say if you're doing 30 seconds of push-ups in week one, week two, you would add on 15 seconds and do 45 seconds. And then week three, you would do a minute. And then week four, you would do um, a minute, 15 seconds. So your body, you're getting used to the movements. You're getting used to the exercises, not feeling like, okay, I have to go from learning how to do a proper push-up to learning how to do a Bulgarian split squat to learning this, this, this. 
you're still, you're getting comfortable with the exercises and all you have to do then is add on a little bit more time. So you're challenging your body, but then you're still getting, um, you're getting the results from it. So I think that that's the best way. And once you're in a consistent routine, then you can start trying all these cool different things. But the first thing is to lock down that routine. Cause if you can't get the routine down, it's so easy to fall off track. We were talking before about you can fall into a fitness rut. You kind of can f- wind up doing the same things over and over again because you're used to them. And But are there any classes out there that you want to try that are different and seem fun to you? Are there any fitness trends that you guys are kind of noticing and like, oh, I need to try that out? I actually have two that I want to try out. So I don't, I mean, they might, they've been around for a while now, but one is F45, which I don't know if you guys have heard of. Oh, we just had that open here. Yeah. So it's kind of like they're opening one by my place too. And it's kind of like group indoor boot camp, but more, um, you know, a lot more with equipment and things like that. It seems kind of intense. I also, I just tried spin like the, like soul cycle style, style spinning. We had that here, which I loved. And the other one I want to try really bad, but <laughs> it's so, this is so weird. I really want to try orange theory, but you know how they have the heart rate monitors? I yeah. have kind of like a wonky rib cage, so my heart rate will not come up on the heart rate monitor. It always says that I'm dead. So really, <laughs> really there's kind of like no point in me doing it because I'd be like, because you know how you're supposed to be watching your own heart rate on the screen. So I'd just be like, okay, well, I'm dead. So those are kind of the three that I want to try. I'm not really into, I'm more into just like functional movements. I'm not really into, you know, like the aerial yoga and all that stuff. I like just kind of like more straightforward. I want to sweat a lot. I want to burn a lot. And I want to be in and out. <laughs> I think for me, I recently actually just started doing um, kickboxing. And that's just something I, for me it was just kind of like it was an opportunity, uh, opportunity that just came up in the area that I live in. And unfortunately, I'm moving, though, so it's not going to be close to me anymore. But I started doing that just to like switch it up. And I loved it. Like it was actually like heavy bag, like proper kickboxing. And I I was really into it. So I'm going to, when I move and once I'm settled, I'm going to look into that again, if it fits in with my new coaching program, but then, okay. And now this is like, guys don't laugh at me. It's so embarrassing. And I've never said this out loud to anyone, anyone at all. Not even my husband doesn't even know this. I have always secretly wanted to go. Oh my gosh. I'm like almost starting to cry. So I'm saying this out loud. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. <laughs> I, I've secretly wanted to go to one of those ninja gyms. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. For real. I really actually want to go. I don't know that I would be good at it at all because I, I what just is don't... a ninja gym? Laura, like, honestly, you're missing out. It's I've like, never heard of this. I'll take, I'll take you to one when I move back to the city. It's literally like the American Ninja Warrior kind of show, but they have gyms that are set up now like that where you have to like jump off of things and run up walls and like, <laughs> but it's a lot of upper body stuff. And I, I actually like strengthening my upper body a lot, but there's a lot of things with heights and I'm like terrified of heights. So I feel like I would get halfway through something and then probably just freeze and have to like have someone come with a ladder and like take me down. So that's my super nerd embarrassing. Um, it, I'm admitting that to you guys right now, but I, I do want to do it. This is a very safe space. So you're, you're totally fine. <laughs> no judgment. No judgment. Yeah, the, um, the gym I go to here was offering a, um, like a summer, a summer course on, um, like focusing on like the ninja, um, obstacle type stuff. So you just, you should have been here and I you should have gotten have. in on it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I was like, that sounds awesome. That sounds like not for me. Um, because same thing, like terrified of heights. Um, I did an obstacle course once, like a race, and yeah. I had to like, I mean, I like crawled along a balance beam, more or less, like scooted, because there was no way I was standing up. It was terrible. Oh, my God. Um, I but, that, you. but that's one of the thing, like, uh, both the men and I were not competitive. So a lot of the fitness classes when we, cause right now we live in different cities, but we're going to be living in the same city again, but we used to do fitness classes together. And we signed up once for one of those like Spartan races, you know, they're kind of like the tough mutter yeah. and we couldn't do it. We like totally we were like, show up. <laughs> no, we were like, we had like a panic attack. Oh no, I actually, I went there and then I was like, I can't do this if you're not coming. And I'm like, I need to get out of here. Like I and just I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep the night before because I was like, 
oh my gosh, there's going to be people that are like all amped up, ready to race. And I just, I hate being in that environment. So that, I don't know. I have no idea why I want to do this ninja stuff. Cause I feel like it'll be very similar. <laughs> I'll probably have an anxiety attack, but I, I do want to go. <laughs> but a lot of the classes that we end up doing are more like no partner work. It's more just like, well, the, and the ones I want to take, they're more like, you're just kind of in your own lane, doing your own thing, not worrying what other people are doing. That's kind of my style more too. Yeah. I get too stressed. <laughs> Yeah, no time for stress. No. Um, so you guys are also podcasters, and you were you were nice enough. Um, Jen and I got to talk to Amanda on your show, which was super super fun. And so I'm wondering if you would tell our listeners a little bit more about your show, because I sort of suspect that the people who like you guys probably like us. The people who like us will probably like you guys. So you know, give them the scoop. Yeah. So our podcast. Well, right now we have Fit Chicks Chat. So we are kind of, we're opening a second one, but I'll tell you about that in a second. But our podcast is called Fit Chicks Chat. And mostly we focus on a whole range of topics, all fo- all focused on women though, in fitness, nutrition, wellness. And we do talk about fitness business on there too. And that's where we're kind of opening the second one to kind of separate it out because we know there's a lot of listeners who listen to our show you know, cause they just want to really learn more. And we do a lot of guest interviews with experts. Um, we've had Jillian Michaels on our show as well. We've also had, you know, naturopathic doctors and holistic nutritionists and all this different kind of walks of life. So there's a lot of women who listen to our show who really just want to learn more, but then there are a lot of fitness professionals or people who are interested in becoming fitness professionals. So we do talk some about fitness business, but like I said, we're going to be opening kind of a second podcast so we can really like siphon it through that. So we're not, for those who just want to hear about the fitness and nutrition and wellness, they're not like, oh, I don't want to hear about this business stuff. So that way it's kind of more segregated. Yeah. And one of the things I really love about our podcast is that we do open it up to discussions in all areas. So we're not just like, you know, just CrossFit or just yoga or, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but having the ability to sort of talk about any kind of topic that comes up, whether it's something that we currently, you know, follow in our own lives, or if it's just something that we're curious about or something that's just, you know, trending in health and fitness, we want to make sure that we're sharing that information so that we can support people on their journey, whichever way they're kind of going. And we, we do have, we kind of bounce between doing interviews with other people. And then sometimes it's just Amanda and I talking about a topic or, you know, what's going on in our lives. And we do talk a lot about mindset because it's something that we believe is like one of the keys to your health, because you can, you know, fix your workouts and fix what's on your plate. But if you can't fix what's between your ears, you are always going to be struggling. So we really, really try to focus a lot on mindset, body positivity too. Um, and we always try to really give a lot of actionable things. So it's not just like, okay, that's really great. But people who listen to our podcast could actually be like, okay, I can go and apply these into my life, like starting today. So we try to keep it really unintimidating. And we also get pretty raw. Like most of the guests that we have on, there's been some interviews actually where like, I actually have decided I'm, I don't want to air some of them because they're not in line with our beliefs, but there's a lot of times that, um, you know, people just get really raw about their personal story. And I don't know, I find like a lot of women too, like with you guys as well, like you make people feel really comfortable. So when they come on, they're like one minute, we're talking about like fermentation and probiotics. And next thing you know, it's going into like how that affect help, help someone through their divorce. Like it's, it just gets, it kind of goes in its own direction, but it's a lot of fun. And there's always stuff in there that I think will really help a lot of people. So where can people find you guys on social media so they can get more information? Um, so you can find us on Facebook at Fitchicks Academy Programs. Uh, also on Instagram, we're at Fitchicks Academy and at Fitchicks. And then, of course, on our website as well at FitchicksAcademy.com or Fitchicks.com. And uh, Kristen, did you have anything else to ask them before we ask the last question? Nope. Go for it. All right, ladies, get ready. This is, our, <laughs> this is our favorite question. We ask everybody who appears on the show. What was the last song you listened to before you did this podcast interview? <laughs> mine was mine was at music class, and it was head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> <laughs> A classic. 
and <laughs> it's a real it's a real winner in our house right now <laughs> I think mine, because I was just, I literally got in from my run right before we started. So I, I, my phone was dying. So I'm listening to like a mix from like 2013 on my phone, which is so bad. <laughs> and I think it was like that song by Neo and Pitbull, but like remixed really fast. Like, um, how does that song go? Tonight, give me everything tonight or whatever. I don't know. It's that was really good. More of it was good. Oh yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, I was just running the whole time thinking like, I really need to update this damn music mix. Is they're like so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank That's you awesome. so much for being on the show. You guys were terrific. This was a real fun interview. No, thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Love this show. Tell us why in a five-star review on iTunes and we'll read it on the air. Also make sure you are a subscriber. If you want to reach out to say hi or have a question about a recent episode, yay, well, feel free to email us at podcast at fitboundgirls.com. And if this podcast jives perfectly with your brand, consider sponsoring the show. Get more info by emailing advertising at fitbottomgirls.com. Find all kinds of Fit Bottom goodness online and on social media at Fit Bottom Girls, Fit Bottom Mamas, Fit Bottom Eats, and Fit Bottom Zen. And if books and movies are your thing, check out the other podcast I co-host called Book vs. Movie, which you can find anywhere where you search for podcasts. Thanks for listening.